this is nothing new okay but we're going to do it a new way kind of and i think it's really useful to do look at projectile motion so this is for classical mechanics and you almost certainly did projectile motion uh in your introductory physics course but we're gonna do it a little bit different and i think it will help us get in the in the flavor of how we do things in classical mechanics because we're going to use some different notations and stuff so here i have some ball i launched some angle theta with the initial velocity v uh, and i started at a position x0 y0 don't even care about that right now and then once it's in the ground in the air we're going to assume no air resistance i only have this downward gravitational force mg so let's start with newton's second law it says this f net vector is m and i'm going to write it as m a and in that case uh, this is equal to the only force is this gravitational force this is mg so I have A equals G. And so G is the gravitational field vector. It does have a negative Y component. I just want to make sure you're okay with that. Um, so, but this is a vector equation. We, all, we like to write this in as two scalar equations in the X and the Y direction. I'll call that X, I'll call that Y. So this would be uh, AX is equal to the X component of the gravitational field, which is zero. A Y, the X component, the Y component of the gravitational field, which is negative G. And one of the things, remember that the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity and the velocity is the derivative of position. So I actually can write this as this, X double dot. And remember, uh, X dot is the derivative of X with respect to time x double dot is the second derivative of x respect to time. And so we write that because uh, it's shorter notation and we're going to deal with some problems that have a lot of derivatives and that makes it really useful. Really, it's it does make things manageable and it looks cool. And one of the things that we like to strive for is looking cool. And the dot notation looks cool. And then in the y direction, this is going to be y double dot. Okay, so I actually have two differential equations that I can solve. And let's start with the x direction. So I'm going to say x double dot equals zero. <clears throat> and I'm going to write this out as the derivative of x dot with respect to t because dot one dot is the derivative with respect to time. So that's I can just convert that into just a derivative just because it looks easier. And now I have this differential equation. Uh, <clears throat> this is a separable problem such that I can treat this each of these as their own separate variable. I can multiply both sides by dt and I get dx dot equals zero dt. And now I can integrate both sides. So if I integrate dx dot, I get x dot. And if I integrate this side, I get the integral zero is just a constant. So I'll just call that a constant c. So x dot equals a constant. This says that the x velocity as this goes through the air is constant, which we knew. But we can, we can do that even more, right? I can say x dot at time t equals zero. If I look over here, I actually know what that is because here's my velocity, v zero, there's my angle. This is my x component, that's my y component. So this is the adjacent side. So this is actually gonna be v zero cosine theta. And so we call that, um, I could call that x dot zero, but I don't really care at this point. Okay, so now let's look at, uh, I have a function of x dot as a function of time, which is the same thing as that, right? If there's no t in there, so it doesn't have to be an x zero. So I have x dot is gonna be dx dt, and that's gonna be v zero cosine theta. Again, I can multiply both sides by dt, and I get dx, equals v0 cosine theta dt. Now I can integrate both sides, and this gives me x as a function of time. This is just a constant, right? Cosine theta, v0 constant, and I have a dt. So if I integrate a constant dt, I get v0 cosine theta t plus some constant. I'm gonna call it the same constant. I reuse it, I know that's a bad idea. And then so finally, I'm going to say uh, x at time t equals zero. If I put in t equals zero, this term goes away and I get c. 
So this gives me the following expression. X is a function of t is v0 cosine theta t plus x0. That's my equation of motion. And this is what's so great about mechanics, is that this says that if I know these initial conditions, if I know v0 and x0, I know every x position for the future of eternity. Okay, I can just map that out forever. And, and now the, then the question becomes, well, do we really know v0? Do we really know x0? But in classical mechanics, we have this deterministic view of reality, which isn't necessarily true, but that's what we have. Mathematically, that's how we model it. Okay, so that's my x motion. Now let's go over here and look at the y equation. So it's a little bit different because it's not equal to zero. y double dot is negative g. So again, I'm going to write this as dy dot dt equals negative g. I'm going to multiply both sides by dt and I get dy dot equals negative g dt. And now I'm going to integrate both sides and I get uh, y, no, I get y dot is the integral of neg g is a constant and that's negative because that's the negative y component. So I, I multiply it by t, so I get negative g t plus a constant and yes I'm using the same c and that's a terrible thing and I'm a terrible person but I accept my terribleness and I'm okay with it. I've accepted who I am. And again I can say y dot at time t equals zero is going to be negative g times zero plus c. So that means c has to be the initial y velocity. So y dot zero is going to be v zero sine theta. Why? Because right here if I have v zero as my initial velocity this is my opposite side. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. So v0 is v, the y component is v0 sine theta. So now I have y, I can put that back in. y dot as a function of time is negative gt plus v0 sine theta. Now I can take the, I can integrate again. I can write instead of y dot, I can say dy dt is negative g t plus v0 sine theta. Now I can multiply both sides by dt again. I get dy is negative g t, put that all in parentheses, plus v0 sine theta dt. Now I can integrate both sides again. And I get y, the integral of negative g t is going to be negative 1 half g t squared. Right, because this is to the one power, I raise it to the plus one and I divide by that, and that's how I get the one half. Then I have to take integrate this, so I get plus v zero sine theta. This is a constant, so I have a t, and then I have another constant c. Y at time t equals zero. Well, if I put in t equals zero, I get negative one half g zero squared plus v zero sine theta times zero squared, zero plus c. So c is going c is going to be y zero, the initial y position. So if I put those two equations together, let's rewrite both those equations, I have the following. Let's draw our picture again. This is the ground, theta, v zero. I have um, x as a function of t is v0 cosine theta t plus x0. y as a function of t is negative one half g t squared plus v0 sine theta t plus y0. And that is my uh, equations for projectile motion. Um, and that's the way we do it. Uh, in classical mechanics. Um, let's just do uh, one of the important things in projectile motion is that in the x equation there's no y's and the y equation there's no x. So these two are independent motions except for that they do both have the same time. So let's just find out how long and how far it goes. 
Let's just do that problem just to see how this would work. So if, if that's the case, I want to know if it starts here at, let's say, x0 equals 0, y0 equals 0, and this is x final, uh, well, then what's my y final? y final is 0. So if I have these two equations, uh, if I find time from one of them, I can put the time into the other one. In this case, if I write my x equation, I have x final equals v0 cosine theta t plus 0, right, because I said it starts at 0. Then I, I, I know everything but t, so I can't solve, I can't solve this. If I look at the y equation, the y final would be y final is zero because it gets back down to the ground. And that's going to be equal to minus one half g t squared plus v zero sine theta t plus zero because I said it started at zero too. So now this equation I actually can solve for t. So let's add one half g t squared to both sides. I get one half g t squared equals v0 sine theta t. Now I divide both sides by t, and I get 1 half g t equals v0 sine theta. And now I can divide both sides by g and multiply by 2. t equals 2 v0 sine theta over g. So that's my time. That's how long it takes to go up and then back down. Now I can use that time up here and I say x final equals v0 cosine theta and then I put in this for time. 2 v0 sine theta over g. And you'll notice that I have a 2 and I have v0 squared cosine theta sine theta over g. And that's how far it goes. And this, you'll see this as the range equation, um, but be very careful. This is only the range equation if it's launched from the same part to the same on level ground. Okay, so it's not really important, um, but it is an example of how you would use these equations. Okay, hope that helps. We'll do some more uh, kinematics with this dot notation stuff. And really, what we're really working up to is, what if I have other forces on here, like an air resistance force, how do I deal with that? But it's important to be able to deal with it without air resistance first.